Hey everyone. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, product management and how product management differs between a B2B product and B2C product. Uh, so yeah, thanks everyone for joining for this session. Um, uh, and I look forward to share my knowledge and insights with you on this topic. Um, so um, what we're going to start with is really talk about what is a B2B product first uh, and what is a B2C product. Um, and really just starting off with a definition before we dive deeper into what are the differences, what are the similarities, are they even two different from each other when it comes to product management? Um, so a uh, little bit about me. Um, I have been doing product management for uh, about a decade now. Uh, I started on consumer side of the house, managing uh, a Black Friday experience um, for uh, Dell's e-commerce uh, experience. Um, I also built their account management experience uh, on consumer side, eventually moved on to do B2B for large enterprise products, such as building enterprise APIs so that we can support submitting of, submitting of purchase orders or providing shipping notifications to large enterprises when they, when they make large purchases. Uh, I also uh, dealt with medium businesses when I built the checkout experience and so on. Most recently, I've been a product manager on um, Alexa smart home front with Amazon. Uh, so kind of going back to my roots on consumer front. Um, so let's talk about B2B product, right? Uh, what is a B2B product? Uh, at the very core of it, it's really just a business model that focuses on selling products or services to other companies, right? So when we look at examples of uh, such companies, like you can think of Salesforce, uh, ServiceNow, you can think of LinkedIn as well with what they provide to the recruiter and employer side of the house and uh, uh, everyone's most favorite paper company, Dunder Mifflin, if any of you out there are office fans, uh, they too are considered a B2B company having selling paper products to uh, uh, other companies. Um, when we talk about B2C product, this is something that most of you uh, would have experienced on your day-to-day -day life, uh, really refers to uh, selling products and services direct directly to the consumers. Uh, and the end users happen to be uh, uh, the recipient of whatever product or services the company may have to offer, right? So we can think of uh, Snapchat, um, Electronic Arts with their gaming products, uh, Tinder, or even Mint uh, with their financial products. Cool, all right. So uh, with that behind us, really just the definition of what a B2B product is and how does it differ from B2C uh, as far as definition is concerned, we can now just start talking about the customer base. How do the customer base differ between uh, these two, right? So uh, on B2B front, really you are uh, talking about uh, CIOs uh, who may end up deciding uh, which enterprise software to use in a company? Like, do I want my company to use uh, Google G Suite or do I want them to use Office 365? Uh, you've got procurement manager, they are responsible for deciding uh, how much to procure, what to procure and so on, really just uh, working closely with the next persona, which happens to be finance manager. Uh, you may also be uh, working with an IT architect or engineer in your customer's company, especially when it comes to uh, helping them decide uh, what's the right product, what's the right solution set, right? This is where, for example, AWS comes in picture and a lot of the decisions being made about what of those services and products are to be used is decided by um, engineers and uh, more of developer persona. Lastly, you have end users as well. Uh, who may eventually end up using your product. For example, like if if uh, the, the CIO or procurement manager decides to use uh, Microsoft 365 or Office 365 uh, in your company, uh, yeah, you could consider that the end user is actual employee who is using like Outlook or Word or other uh, Office products. Um, now, when we look at B2C on the other hand, uh, really the decision maker is the user, right? So as we were talking about B2B products where the CIO happens to make a decision or a procurement manager happens to make a decision along with finance manager, while end user really uh, gets to use the product. On B2C front, as you can imagine, decision maker and user are really the same uh, personas. Um, they happen to be largely role agnostic. Uh, of course, you can tailor your product to a specific 
demographic and specific persona of people. Uh, but largely speaking, um, uh, traditionally, you would have B2B, B2C products that are role agnostic and rather profession agnostic as well. Um, next, uh, let's talk about customer needs, right? How do they differ uh, when it comes to B2B versus B2C products, right? So um, on B2B front, uh, it's largely relationship-based. Um, you would have um, a lot of decisions being made uh, 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 based on relationship trying to decide, okay, I am going to use this software for next 10 years, uh, and this is the kind of investment I want to make so that my employees or others can uh, get the most out of this B2B product. So it just happens to be a lot more relationship based between um, uh, the salespeople in your company or uh, product owners in your company and uh, actual enterprise customers. Uh, you do end up uh, depending a lot more on industry insights. Like for example, if you have built a B2B product suite for automobile industry, right? So you would end up having to depend a lot more on, okay, what's going on with automobile industry? Where do they need the most help? What kind of products, solutions, features, and services do we build for them? And lastly, um, uh, uh, you also depend a lot more on identifying process maps and how do you help customers simplify the same? Uh, with your products or services. Um, in contrast, when you look at B2C, like it's largely data-driven, um, uh, you do end up depending a lot more on what's happening uh, at uh, micro level, uh, sometimes micro, but mostly micro level with your product, uh, trying to make the right decision in terms of uh, what's the right path forward uh, to really optimize the experience. Um, as opposed to industry insights, you would be largely dependent upon aggregated user insights in terms of most of your, in terms of what your most uh, users are doing with your product. Uh, and it's also experimental, right? So for example, like on Alexa front, um, you would have, uh, uh, you would have a new feature that says uh, Alexa should be able to do this or that. Um, you can then uh, let your customers uh, really see uh, how the experience is. You can um, really test out if we introduce new friction or if the if the virtual assistant did what she was supposed to, uh, and really make the right decision as to um, uh, do we really globalize the feature, do we add more features to it, and so on. Uh, so really, uh, you end up uh, getting to be more experimental with B two C products, while on B two B front, you really want to make sure that. Um, you are very much in tune with uh, what your customer wants to do, what they're really trying to solve for, uh, and really just go after those um, uh, unique set of use cases for whatever industry or uh, segment that you are serving. Um, now, let's talk about product decisions, right? Uh, how, how, do, how do we really make decisions when it comes to uh, managing a B2B product as a product manager and uh, B2C? All right, so on, on B2B front, uh, you would depend a lot more on customer feedback. Um, all right, so uh, let's say you own a B2B product suite, you have got like 20 large enterprises in your uh, account as your customers. Uh, a lot of your roadmap decisions, a lot of your feature decisions will really come out of the fact that, okay, uh, customer A says, this is the set of processes that is broken and this is where I need your help. Um, so customer feedback kind of takes a front seat uh, when it comes to uh, managing B2B products uh, because that's what really what you're trying to solve for those 20 accounts in this example. Uh, next is, of course, product teams. Uh, ideas and decisions can come out of product teams right after that when it comes to B2B product. Uh, competitors uh, is the third one in that sequence, uh, really trying to make sure that, okay, if there is a competitive advantage that we can have on our product that will bring more enterprise customers to my B2B product, then uh, that aspect too ends up driving a lot of product decisions. And lastly, internal suggestions. This is where uh, your procurement manager or your salespeople will come to you and say, hey, if you give me feature A or feature B, I would be able to sell more. Or uh, these six of my customers really want us to build this feature. Uh, can we really make it part of our roadmap? And those internal suggestions end up playing a huge role uh, in collaboration with, of course, customer feedback to, to drive your product decisions. On B2C front, uh, really, yeah, your product teams end up uh, making a lot of decisions, decisions in terms of 
uh, what are the right feature set? Uh, how do we really prioritize it? Uh, really measuring impact that, okay, if we were to build feature A prior to feature B, or if we were to deprioritize feature B completely, uh, what kind of impact will we have um, in terms of uh, the KPIs that you really care about? Um, internal suggestions also uh, take a huge role in progressions on B2C front. This happens to be your uh, stakeholders or your engineers or your designers and so on. Um, and then, of course, competitors as well. And lastly, customer feedback. The reason why kind of customer feedback is still important on B2C front is because you want to stay close to qualitative feedback uh, so that you can really uh, pair it up with your quantitative insights and build the right things. Uh, but in terms of customer feedback on B2C front, you end up having to, again, look at like aggregated qualitative feedback to go after the right things in a prioritized manner. Um, so like this is this is a, a rough idea around um, like where do the product ideas come from on B two B front and on B two C front. As you can see, like customer feedback given B two B is more relationship driven uh, um, product management. Um, you do end up depending a lot more on customer feedback and really uh, uh, diving deeper into the same um, on B two C front as we discussed. Um, uh, uh, product teams end up uh, getting to make a lot of decisions uh, to try and make sure that they are really be so really solving for the customer pain points. Next is uh, ROI decisions, right? Uh, when it comes to really uh, monetizing a B2B product versus B2C product, right? So uh, on B2B front, uh, it really depends upon organization really adopting your uh, product or feature. For example, uh, if you launched uh, let's say a brand new um, uh, email campaign service. Right now, the email campaign service has to be adopted by X number of enterprises to be able to say that, okay, we are really uh, getting returns on our investment when we build this product, uh, we are able to monetize it or not. So it really depends upon really organizations or companies or enterprises saying that, yeah, I do see value in this uh, um, product. And I do want to adopt it so that like thousands of my employees can really benefit out of it. Uh, it is most likely a pre-monetized product to an, to an extent, uh, unless you are building something brand new, which has never been done before. But in general, let's say you are building uh, a SaaS product uh, and that has been a proven market for something like that. Uh, you can go into the market with uh, pre-monetized uh, uh, point of view and say, hey, I'm going to sell it for um, uh, this value annually to be able to really uh, make up for my uh, investment. And then um, you end up dep depending a lot more on support and services and subscriptions as well, uh, uh, especially, if, especially if it's a uh, harder product, you end up going out to provide necessary support. Uh, if, it happens, if, it, if it happens to be a software product, uh, you do get to really refresh their uh, licenses and so on to be able to truly monetize all new features that you add on top of your existing products. Uh, and then lastly, uh, uh, it could likely be a tiered pricing in B2B case, uh, especially if you are serving uh, a generalized industry, you really want to tier your price based on like the size of the company that you are really serving. Uh, so B2B products are likely to have uh, tiered pricing on B2C front, like unlike B2B, which is largely, uh, largely dependent upon organizing or uh, organizations adopting it, uh, B2C is really all about really your customers adopting it. You really finding uh, right marketing challenge to reach out to these customers and have them uh, use your product. For example, like you could do, I don't know, Instagram ads to be able to uh, uh, sell your app and get people to download it more and really drive adoption. Um, you can monetize it at launch, uh, depends on what kind of model you go after. But uh, if you really wanna uh, get a feel of uh, how really customers are uh, interacting with it, do, are they liking it or not? Should you drive any improvement or not? Um, you can do monetization after the launch, really after getting the feedback. Um, in terms of really uh, different models, um, you could go after just serving ads, keeping your application free uh, and really generate uh, uh, monetization out of uh, ads. You can do freemium model as well. And lastly, subscription applies to B2C as well. Um, B2C product could, could have flat pricing, but it can also have tiered pricing depending upon 
uh, what you are really trying to sell. Um, like if we were to look at a few examples, right? So on P2P front, uh, you've got like Google G Suite. Uh, in this case, you can see uh, you've got tiered pricing really based on like number of users per month that are going to use uh, uh, the G Suite product. Um, and that really drives the monetization strategy and so on. On B2C front, um, you've got um, uh, an example of Headspace, right? That happens to help you meditate uh, through an app. Um, like you can see, there is a, a tiered subscription pricing uh, there as well. Uh, so it really depends upon uh, what kind of market you are serving, what kind of monetization strategy works for you, uh, and really optimizing uh, the, the pricing of your services to, to meet the customer needs. Um, let's talk about product deliveries, right? And how product deliveries really differ uh, between these two uh, disciplines. So uh, on B2B front, uh, you have got largely longer iteration cycles, uh, especially if you are serving uh, large enterprises with complex process maps, uh, you end up having to tweak and fine tune a lot more so that you are not building a product just for one customer. Uh, you, so uh, it ends up taking a lot more time to make sure that uh, whatever features and services and applications that you are building is applicable and useful across uh, uh, across the segment that you are really serving with your B2B product. In comparison, um, as you could guess on B2C front, you could have shorter iteration cycles, especially in relation to the experiments you may run. So like, it's quite possible you launch a tiny feature, uh, run an experiment, do A-B testing and figure out, okay, this performs better than uh, this recipe and then really do another launch to uh, go after the optimized experience. Um, on B2B front, you are largely like customer roadmap dependent. It's quite possible that you may build a product, but customer may not have their engineering capacity or uh, any bandwidth to really adopt your uh, features or services. For example, let's say you built an enterprise API uh, uh, so that your customer can submit orders uh, from their portal uh, or transactions from their portal. Now you could build all the APS that you really want to offer, but if your customer doesn't have the bandwidth or capacity to uh, uh, do the integration work, do the work on their front to really uh, use your products and features, uh, then yeah, you would have adoption challenges. So um, a B2B product is largely customer uh, roadmap dependent as well. Uh, what you do want to do is really before really building a feature or as you're building the feature, you want to be in constant touch with your customers, really honing into the a relationship-based uh, product model, as I was referring to earlier, um, and, and really ask the questions that, hey, if you were to build this feature in this timeline, you think you would have uh, available capacity or uh, bandwidth to really adopt these features. And then uh, for the reasons I described, your adoption cycle could be longer, right? Like out of your 100 enterprise customers, 10 of them could come through and say, yes, um, we like this feature and we are going to adopt it in the year that you launch it. Well, like rest of the customers may come to you and say, hey, can you add a few more features before we can adopt it? Or some customers may come to you and say, hey, we cannot do it this year, but we really like this feature. You're gonna try and prioritize it in our roadmap next year. Right? So your adoption cycle uh, uh, usually becomes longer on B2B product. And that 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 happens to be by the nature of uh, uh, the discipline on B2B front. Um, on B2C, uh, yeah, it's unlike B2B being customer roadmap dependent, dependent on B2C front, it's largely user behavior dependent. Uh, so um, <clears throat> if you come to realize that uh, customers are using this feature a lot more than that feature, you can really uh, go after uh, optimizing what uh, uh, you think is most appropriate for your product. Right? For example, uh, if you've got um, uh, a social media app and you come to realize that your customers are using the filters feature a lot more, uh, you can really go after it and decide, hey, do I want to optimize it further to really um, uh, improve my engagement KPIs and so on. Um, and then lastly, you would have, uh, it's mostly shorter adoption cycles, like right? you launch something, um, your users or customers may like it, accept it, or they may not like it, not use it and reject it. So uh, you would have much more faster uh, uh, way to fail or succeed on B2C front uh, to really decide, okay, how do you want to prioritize uh, your next set of features? 
Next is really the question, like, are they really different, right? So far we talked about um, like, how do you make product decisions? How does monetization really differ between the two, uh, the definition of the two? And really we saw stark contrast between uh, managing products across both of these disciplines. But like when it comes to uh, like the core uh, of the role, uh, the question is, are they really different? So let's really talk about what are the similarities, right? What, what does not change regardless of the product that you are trying to manage? Um, so across both disciplines, like you would have to know the customer base, right? Regardless of you managing a B2B product or B2C, uh, you would want to know who you are really serving. Uh, you would have to dive really deeper into understanding what their needs are, like what are their challenges? What are they trying to solve for? Um, uh, are there process issues or are there engagement issues that really what you're trying to uh, uh, address? Uh, across both roles, you, you will end up working very closely with designers. Um, um, on enterprise front, on B2B front, uh, the nature of the work that you do with your designer could be a little different uh, than B2C, but at the very core of it, uh, you do end up working with uh, uh, that group of people in your company uh, equally across both kind of products. Um, uh, you do end up building a lot of solutions with engineers as well across both disciplines. Um, uh, so regardless of your product being a B2B product or B2C, uh, uh, really just partnering with your uh, engineers uh, plays a core role as well. And lastly, and more importantly, really delivering, monitoring, and iterating on a feature does not change. Of course, the uh, length of the cycle and length of adoption and the rate of adoption may differ between B2B and B2C, but really at the end of the day, at the very core of it, yeah, you would be delivering features, monitoring them and really iterating upon them. Um, so uh, this is what I wanna leave you with. Um, I would say uh, this is something that I really uh, 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 like by uh, Halim Dunsky. Uh, he says, your product or mine, don't be confused about it, won't bring happiness. So what I would really say is try both. Uh, if you are already in a product career uh, uh, and you have been doing consumer side of product a lot more, feel free to uh, uh, jump to doing uh, enterprise or B2B product management uh, and really see the difference or similarities for yourself. Uh, if you're doing B2B, try and do the same on B2C front. Uh, if you are starting off your career trying to decide like, which role to go after, which company to go after, what kind of product to sell. I would say, uh, just go after what you feel most passionate about at first, but then be open to really managing any kind of product and really become uh, like agnostic to what kind of product you serve uh, or build as a product manager. Um, with that said, um, I would say if you do want to reach out to me, uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, look up Parth Acharya, or if you do want to set up uh, mentorship sessions or uh, just one-on-ones, I do host office hours uh, every weekend in the morning. You can find me on canonly.com slash Parth Acharya, and uh, I'd be happy to uh, become part of your product management journey uh, in any way or form possible. Thank you.